During Google Summer of Code, I worked on unit tests for large-scale brain network dynamics under the supervision of Dr. Rick Gherkin and Dr. John Griffith. The project resulted in a Python package available on GitHub, which is what I'll be presenting now. The purpose of the project was to develop unit tests to validate predictions from models generating a neural power spectrum against relevant features of AEG data. Indeed, there are unit tests for models of single neurons and small networks, but none for models concerned with large-scale brain network dynamics. The project follows the Sione framework, which helps researchers create unit tests for scientific models. Each unit test generates and statistically validates predictions from a model against one relevant feature of empirical data to then produce a score indicating agreement between the model and the reference feature or data. The Python package we have developed, called FoofUnit, implements SciUnit test for several features of neural power spectra. In addition to SciUnit, the Foof library is also used. Foof is a tool parameterizing neural power spectra, allowing us to extract different features of the neural power spectrum. For example, Foof is able to detect the presence of peaks and to give their central frequency. Therefore, for each unit test, the neural power spectrum is first parameterized with Foof. And we have an example here with a time series followed by the power spectrum and then the parameterized neural power spectrum with the Foof tool in the log scale. As mentioned previously, our Foof unit tests build upon the formalized validation scheme of the SciUnit package, which is based on the design documentation and implementation of classes in Python, which can be found in the Foof unit folder. Each SciUnit unit test requires a capability, model, score, and test class. The capability class describes the methods a model must implement in order to take the test. In our case, the only requirement is that the model generates a neural power spectrum. Then we have the model class Neural Power Spectra, which implements the capability and is instantiated with the frequency, power values, and frequency range of the model Neural Power Spectrum. We also have a model class which was made to create a frozen data trace of empirical Neural Power Spectrum data. Many types of score classes are already available in the SciUnit package, such as Boolean score. Uh, however, we created a correlation score for one of our tests. We have three different types of test classes. So without going into too much detail, each test class must have a generate this prediction function, which will give the predicted model power spectrum, and the compute score function, which will return a score with the information of interest, which could either be a Boolean or a float score or even a correlation score. So I'm going to explain how to run each unit test by going through three examples that can be found in the examples folder, each corresponding to one unit test. Each test corresponds to different type of usage of SciUnits. Central peak test corresponds to a model versus feature unit test, because the unit test checks whether peak is present in a, within a specific frequency range of a model or empirical neural power spectrum. So the test is instantiated with a frequency band. So first, uh, we start by importing all the library modules of interest, especially the capability model and test classes that we need. So for example purposes, we simulate a neural power spectrum with the FOOF tool. And in this case, we generate a power spectrum with a peak at 10 Hz. The simulated neural power spectrum is compared against empirical data. So in this case, we load in 10 different MEG data, which is used as the observation. So this is where the data model class is used. So this is used by wrapping so the empirical data. This enables the data to behave like a model and to then have a frozen data trace. The neural power spectra model class so is instantiated with the values from the simulated neural power spectrum. So as mentioned previously, the test is instantiated um, by different frequency ranges. In our case, we're looking at the neural power spectrum, so the frequency bands that we're interested in are different brainwave. So we have the theta, alpha, beta, and gamma frequency range. And a test suit is created where each uh, test corresponds to a specific frequency range. So then we have a list of the model in data on which the test will be applied, and the judge method executes the test and returns a score. And the final result is a score matrix uh, with a summary of all the results. So the first information that we have is that we can 
verify that a peak is present in the range of interest. So for example, here we have a pass score and alpha, which is to be expected as the simulated power spectra produces a peak at 10 Hertz. And secondly, we can also compare the results with different empirical data. So this was the first test. The next test corresponds to model versus empirical data units test instead of um, uh, looking at a feature. So we have two different types of tests, band power, which compares the power frequency ranges between the model and the data, and then peak power, which compares the power of detected peak. So again, we import the library models that we need. Uh, so again, we generate a simulated neural power, we generate a simulated neural power spectrum with FOOF, and we load in one mega empirical data, which is the observation. So the model class, the neural power spectrum model class in situation with the simulated neural power spectra. We again look are going to look at the band and peak power in each of the frequency bands corresponding to brain waves, so theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. And then the judge method executed the test. So result one So in this case, the result is a float score. Um, where a smaller value implies a greater similarity between the model and the data. So in this case, for the band power, we can see a greater similarity in the alpha frequency range. And in the peak power, we can see that we only have a result in the alpha range, which means that both the model and the data have a peak in the alpha range, which will explain the greater similarity in the band power. Um, finally, we have the last unit test, which corresponds to a model versus model unit test. So we are comparing two model neural power spectra. This is useful for testing models against a reference model. So importation of all the libraries and models. And here, since we only have models, we are generating five different simulated power spectra with different aperiodic and periodic components. And each corresponds to an instance of the model class neural power spectra. And then the judge method execute the test and it returns a correlation matrix. So in this example, we can see that simulated power spectra, one, three, and nine, five are the most similar as they have a, great, a result greater than 0 0.9. So these uh, were three simple examples on how to run each of the unit tests. However, we only also wanted to present a, a scientifically use case of the package, which we did using by generating models using the virtual brain, a neuroinformatics platform. So the virtual brain has a collection of neuronal dynamics models where parameters can be varied and adapted. So in our example, we focus on three different single node models called Generic 2D Oscillator, Wilson Cohen, and Janssen Reed. The aim was to create a database with central peak test results, which is the first example, um, for different brainwave ranges, so by performing parameter sweeps of the three selected models, enabling the user to determine which model parameters can be used to produce peaks of interest. So all the functions uh, useful for this example are present in the DB folder, which has a single node TVB class um, generating the neural power spectrum, and then a TVB database function, which will give the results um, for each parameter combinations, and then CSV file just saves the results in a CSV file. So we did it for generic 2D oscillator, Johnson Ritt, and Wilson Cohen. So to have an idea of how the CSV file looks like, here's an example here, where we have the different parameter combination values, and here we have results alpha, so it gives the result for the central peak test for the alpha frequency range. And once we have this database, for example, we can then read in the results, all the the results and then create a heat map which, uh, which we, where we can assess the influence of the different parameters. So for future I'd be, it could be interested to perform tests on more complex models and also to build similar test classes for stimulus evoked response simulation.